Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and greetings. Welcome to the second part of this chapter number two, Ecology for SB025 Biology, for semester number two. Okay, from this video, we are going to look at three learning outcomes. The first one would be to explain the biotic potential and also the environmental resistance together with the effect on the population growth. The second one would be to explain the current capacity and its importance. And the third one is to describe the natality and mortality together with the effect on the rate of the population growth. Okay, for the population ecology, uh, it is actually a study of how members of the population will interact with the environment. So for this population ecology, we are going to look at the population growth, the population growth curve together with their limiting factors. Okay, the definition of this population growth itself is uh, a change in the number of individuals in the population. So it can be referred as the positive growth when the numbers are increasing and also it can be referred as the negative growth when the numbers are decreasing. So there are three terms that we are going to look at for this population growth. The first one would be the biotic potential, the second one would be the environmental resistance and the third one would be the carrying capacity. So together with this, all these three terms, we are going to look at the factors which can affect on the rate of the population growth. Okay, let's look at the first term, which is the biotic potential. So this biotic potential can be represented by the small r, which can, define, which can be defined as the maximum number of offspring that an organism can produce under the ideal condition. But what does it mean by these ideal conditions? So the ideal conditions here, we, it can be referred to the two situations. The first situation is where the resources are abundant, and the second situation is where the population density is low. So given that the population is undergoing these two situations, it would be the ideal condition where it allows the maximum birth rate and a minimum death rate. So in other words, the, birth, the number of births uh, exceed the number of the death. So this biotic potential, it is actually the force that pushes up a population growth curve. And optimal condition will produce the exponential growth, uh, growth curve, uh, which also can be known as the J-shaped curve. Okay? And the exponential growth will occur when the resources are not limited, or we can say it is uh, abundant. However, no population can grow forever. Okay, biotic potential, it cannot be sustained. This is because some form of the environmental resistance will eventually limit further population growth. If we refer to the ideal condition, there are two ideal conditions just now. The first one, the resources are abundant. The second one, the population density is low. In reality, this ideal condition it cannot be sustained. The resources, over time, it will become limited and the density of the population will eventually become increasing or the population density will increase over time. The biotic potential they can be influenced by these three following factors. The first one is the age, the second one is the period and also the number. For the age here, we are looking at when the population or the individuals in, the, in that particular population will start to reproduce. For the period here, how often the reproduction will occur in that particular population. And for the number here, how many offspring will be born at the time. Okay, the second term here would be the environmental resistance, which can be defined as the combination of biotic and abiotic factors that can limit uh, the population growth. So in other words, uh, the environmental resistance here it can limit the size of the population. So what does it mean by this biotic and abiotic factors? The biotic factors refers to the living factors and for the abiotic factors it refers to the non-living factors. When population becoming large, they tend to run out some of the limiting resources because the individuals in that particular population, they are competing for the resources. For example, the food water, light, oxygen, space, and etc. And hence, this environmental resistance limit further population growth and pushes down the population growth curve. Thus, this will prevent the population from growing exponentially or achieving the abiotic potential. So, in the presence of the environmental resistance, the population growth curve will 
not be the J shape cup because the population is not growing exponentially. Example of these biotic factors would be the competition, the predator and prey relationship, and also the parasitism. Meanwhile, for the abiotic factors or the non living factors would be the food, space, water, and also climate. And the third term here is the carrying capacity, which can be represented by the capital K. And what does it mean by this carrying capacity? It refers to the maximum population size that can be sustained over a relatively long period of time by a particular environment, or in other words, the maximum population size that the environment can support. Okay. Once population growth slows and then maintains a nearly steady level, the population is said to be at the carrying capacity for the environment. So this condition is what we call as the dynamic equilibrium, which will ensure that the natality rate equals to the mortality rate. Natality here means birth and mortality here means death. So in other words, the uh, carrying capacity ensures that the birth rate equals to the death rate. So with the time, population stabilizes at or near the carrying capacity of it its environment. Okay, for this carrying capacity, it depends on the resource, resources availability. The population size will then fluctuate around its environment. So changes which cause this fluctuation include all of the environmental resistance, for example the seasonal, the climatic differences which can affect the availability of light, water and food. Or the other factors, for example, we have the predation the competition, also the diseases. There are two main factors which can affect the rate of the population growth, namely the first one, natality, and the second one, the mortality. What does it mean by this natality? It refers to the rate at which the individuals produce the offspring, in other words, birth, where it will increase the population growth. And for the mortality here, it refers to the rate at which the individuals die, or in other words, uh, death. So this will decrease the population growth. Okay, the growth rate or the rate of change of the population is counted on per capita basis or per individual. So the growth rate here, it can be increased or it can be decreased. So when we are talking about the growth rate, it is actually referring to the birth rate minus the death rate. So if individuals in the population are born faster than they die, the growth rate is in positive value, thus this population is said to be increasing. The population size is said to be increasing. But if individuals in a population die faster than they're born, the growth rate is in negative value, thus this population size is said to be decreasing. But if the growth rate is equal to zero, meaning that the birth and the death of the individuals in that particular population is equal, then this population size is said to be stationary. With that, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.